Okay, it's about 10 to 1. Um, I have put the other one up around the other side. <coughs> Not completely finished. Uh, <laughs> stuffed up the down pipe initially, used a 45 degree angle and it was too much of an angle and it was actually going to go down straight and then go on a 45. Well, it's not going to work. The gutter itself would have to be half pushed up higher just to make it happen. And uh, so, <clears throat> and also because of the way the drum is, it's fatter, and then of course it tapers into the smaller lid or the opening at the top, and uh, means it's a little bit further away. It's not just a direct drop straight down. So. I ended up wasting a 45 degree um, bend, which I had to cut off, and then I found, amazingly, I had a 22 and a half degree one all the time. And uh, instead of going down and then going on a 45 degree bend and still not make it, I've actually gone on a 22 and a half degree bend and then gone down. And uh, I've only gone down for like about four inches, 22 and a half degree bend, and then continued down. <coughs> Lines up right in the middle. I scraped away a lot of the old grass, which I probably should just put in a bucket and try and carry away so it doesn't end up blowing all around the place. But there's a lot of dry grass there, and um, as you guys probably saw when I was pruning it, um, all in that corner. And I got some dirt, and I tried to sort of level out the surface, and then I built up some, <coughs> only one layer of bricks, not two layers, and it works fine. Um, I done the lace thing a little bit too big and the sides are flopping around so I'm going to have to get the uh, scissors give it another bit of a trim because the overhang is just too much and it keeps flopping under the top again um, <coughs> I've flattened out it. <laughs> it's just propped up with a blooming a matic which is like the, the pick thing I dig the serrated tussock out with uh, and a shovel jammed into the ground against and then jammed against box thorn and the rose bush um, that mesh that I have got around well I went first to put around the one here that I ended up chucking out the driveway I've flattened that out and I've sat that up as I was saying against the box thorn with a shovel and a mattock and against the rose bush to try and just stop sheep going there temporarily while I eat some lunch um, later on I'll get some actual proper star pickets and slam into the ground and, and might go and cut open the second one. Um, I want to have one side that I can sort of open to go in there. Um, <coughs> and, uh, you know, with this one I got out here, I can only got to loosen off two little bits of wire and I can sort of open it up. Just little shitty bits of blooming tie wire for fencing that are only as thin as hell. In actual fact, I think it might be old electric fence wire that's as thin as hell. Um, and I want a similar sort of thing there so I can actually open it up. And I've got plenty of sheep fencing, uh, and I might get basic sheep fencing on the tank side. Um, and on, like on the solar panel side of the house, and on the other side, um, where the guttering is, I might have the actual mesh and be able to swing it open and closed. Um, beauty of this mesh is you've, you've got a bit of overhang to be able to tie around. And anyway, you can just get little bits of tie wire and, and loop them through the holes in the post and sort of make yourself shit box hinges as a result. And um, <coughs> my uncle used to like to tie things off with string. I'm more a tie things off with wire person. Just like uh, some people like nails and I don't. I like screws. So I believe they're stronger. And one of the things I noticed with baling twine, which is what I'm usually referring to when I say string, is uh, it all frays out of the shit out. It's frayed from the get-go. Even that little vent up in the top of my bedroom there, that is all the height at which, you know, closed, open or halfway. I've got three different screws and I've hooked a bit of baling twine on for that. And the amount of times the bloody baling twine gets twisted into the shit house, into the screw, that I've just got it looped over the top of, you know, and you're trying to get it off, and it's just about, ah, turns to shit. So I'm not really <clears throat> as pro baling twine as most people. Uh, if you're a smart cooker, you get those K2 
carabiners, and I'm not saying, you know those things they use for ropes, you know, the big clips, not those good ones like that, not the other ones where you've got like a, almost like a bit of pipe tapped in the middle, like a nut, that you've, you know, you flick it open and then you close it and then you screw that up to hold not anything like that. You can get these shitty little ones that are made out of aluminium. Um, and they're the same as what I've got down on the grapevines. And they're just like... There's a pack of three for friggin' three, four, five bucks, you know. You'd probably get them in the dollar store, two for a bloody dollar in the States. Um, and they're just an aluminium carabiner. They bends pretty easily. They're, they're like those ones that people use sometimes for, um, like their keys, hooking their keys onto their um, pants. This, uh, uh, some of my pants have got, like this extra little belt loop thing that's below where the belt loops are that is designed just to hook your little, some people use like a dog collar thing. Um, maybe a bit more of a smaller one like that. Um, other people uh, have a carabiner clip, and I find the carabiner clips are real good because if you've got decent mesh, you can hook it around the two bits of mesh, and you can basically just hook one piece of mesh to the other, and then it closes it off. And because you're only buying for peanuts, you know, sure they aren't strong, but like it doesn't need to be terribly strong, and, and then you just clip them on like that, and uh, they're not quite. Well, you know, I could use it a dog clip and all that, but um, probably a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, you know what I'm saying, it just sort of uh, making it rather dramatic because somehow I've got to, you know, unthread that key ring piece and yabba 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 and, and, and all that and, and for what, you know. But uh, not saying I wouldn't use those, but the reality is I'm probably not going to go in there much and I'll just use wire, but those caravan clips are fantastic just for basic stuff, you know, like just for making El Crapo gates that aren't really properly hinged, but it doesn't really matter because you're cheaping out and, you know, like sheep, once they realise there's something there, they're different, they're sort of flighty, but say things like chooks and stuff like that ain't really going to bust into anything because they're not terribly strong animals, you know, and, and putting carabiner clips on things you know, works out pretty good, so long as you don't have raccoons, which we don't over here. But anyway, that's um, what I've got to do. I'll try and show you guys all this, but I'm going to have to turn the microphone off because the wind out there is freaking ridiculous. Wrigglers. That is how I've done it. Um, I don't think they've put too much weight on that. I mean, it still seems all sealed and all good anyway. A little silicon bead in there. Anyway, that's the strap for it. Build it back onto the old post, and uh, this is just initially filling as a saying, a couple of bricks. These taps are great because you tighten them and you never know if they're going to go perfectly down. And uh, well, this one wasn't, but anyway, I'm basically just trying to fill water into the lines uh, using the tank. Seb's working brilliantly, except as I was saying, flapping around, I've still got to cut that off. There's the mesh and a few tools and shit. Put some across here. And preferably something across here as well. Actually, I've still got a standing post there, I only just noticed. So I might be able to actually go from that standing post back to something on this tank or slam another post in beside the uh, tank or something like that. Put a bit of standard mesh along there. I uh, may have come a little bit short 
on hose clamps, but that's a pretty neat fit. And uh, I've still got a tap. See, originally this piece wasn't on. I put that piece on oh, when I first moved here. Um, water has still come out that tap, but this is a lot faster. It's a bigger tap. It doesn't cut back to a smaller. But that's all right. Bit of duct tape. It's sort of a neat enough fit but not really terribly tight, but I mean it's holding the weight of water that's only going a couple of metres in a, in a pipe anyway. So I might leave that running for quite a while actually. Still brilliantly picking up all the little wrigglers, which I'm sort of surprised they're still around in the tank. Those of you who don't know, especially those in uh, European countries, it's mosquito larvae. When they go through the hot water system, which they have once before, they uh, kill them all with the heat of the hot water system. What do you reckon, pussy? Very intriguing. Hey, I don't want you clawing this bloody filter here because that'll stuff things up. It should be starting to flow out. I might have an airlock in the line or some shit, I don't know. Actually, it's probably a point of the line that's sort of almost as level as that anyway. Just see what's going on here. Oh, that's right. It should be flowing out to it. It's only got a very small outlet. There's a hole already in there, but the hole's only bloody the size of about that thing there, like it's only like a little half inch blooming hole or about three eighths inch hole that comes out where the fitting goes on. So the fitting looks far bigger than it actually is in reality. It's, uh, I might pace this up a bit and fill her up and then just wait till it all... Anyway, um, I probably should go down the other end and stick it in an IBC and tie it on because it's still just laying on the ground down there. But as I said, there's got to be so much water fill into the line around here, the stuff I put in the trench yesterday, all that stuff, right down to basically the pine trees and only at the point that it gets to the pine trees is it actually going to start flowing because it really starts to go downhill properly. But all the same, I should go and hook up the uh, line into an IBC, clip the last two metres off and tie it down with a bit of string. I know I said I don't like string, but I want to be able to undo it and change IBCs. Um, when I do have to change the IBCs down the hill, but this is the thing, I'm not joking, I mean this tank's pretty full, reasonably, you know, she should be up around here, probably nearly to the overflow point, uh, but all the same, it'll probably take more than all of this just to fill water into the lines. So this is one of these things where, same as I experienced the first time I filled up the house system, by the time water come from the water tank out there, right through into the bathroom, down in the laundry, there was so much line, it was hundreds of litres. Uh, I mean, that's one inch line, but this is three quarter inch line, you know? And honestly, I was pumping for 20, 25 minutes um, to fill a tank that should take 10 minutes to fill. And that was because it was all just going into the actual water line. And when I went to turn it all on, there was very few bubbles actually in the water line because most of the water line was actually full of water and of course I've got to go through this whole process again with this which is sort of confusing me why it's getting so high but anyway I might gun it, get it up high and then go do what I've got to do as I was saying before Just questioning if there's not uh, shit in the line but the reality of the situation is the first line I've done was this one so if there's any friggin spiders or anything it'll be in this first line, I didn't realise, I knew yeah, there's a little bit of crap on the top, uh, I washed some of the sand down into the end of the pipe and I got rid of that before, there's actually water in there, <laughs> just about there, so that's always pretty much to the fill point of, yeah, to where it goes out the tap, anyway I'll go and play around with me, uh, this thing doesn't seem to be doing anything, and I don't think it's a kink in the line at any point, 
because uh, it's all been pretty well looked at, and it's it's a pretty good line actually. I mean, it's only about a couple of years old. It's not the sort of stuff that kinks very easily. So I'll have a look at the little uh, connector here and see if I can get a. It's probably just a friggin' big airlock, you know. Let's have a look. Oh, the wind's probably getting the microphone. Whoa, yeah. Might have just been air. I can't even blow through the damn line. It's a really hard pressure. Uh, so I think there was one bit that's a bit kinked up. Um, I may have to just replace a little stretch of line. I think it's somewhere in here. I probably shouldn't have even put it in to begin with, but, it, you know, like it's, you know, it's a big bloody length and sort of look pretty all right, except there's a little bit of a kink in the middle. Anyway, I've got a few extra connectors or whatever, uh, and I can always just put in a few extra metres of that same line. Um, don't really feel like digging this up, but I'll have a go at just getting the end of this out, because it ends right just here and see if I can blow through one of these and try and work out what one uh, what one's what um, yeah pretty certain this one's the one at the this side of the house and that one's the one I've just been showing you and it may be that that bit that was crumpled was just fucked up basically uh, this is a trouble, like, you know, massive long length and you got this one little crimpled bit and what am I supposed to do? Go to the other end of the line just to avoid the whole crimp just, ah, oh, she'll be right, yeah, she'll be right or fucking right. And here we are. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one of those things, people, if you can't blow down a water line, the friggin' water can't dig down it either. And that's what it was, it was an airlock. It was probably an airlock caused by this stupid crimp that I'm going to have to dig up and possibly replace, but I'll... I'll just see from this end first uh, if I can blow up that way and uh, chances are I can't and yeah, got to go through and uh, find a few connectors I might have to go to my father's place and steal a couple of half inch ones or go through and see what other ones I've uh, got if any, there's these weird ones they use to or the cheapo ones to do um, vineyards which work pretty oh, right-ish, maybe, but uh, not really my preference, but I might be having a choice right about now. I'm going around trying to look for my damn hoses that I used to use for that crappy little solar pump. Not 100% sure exactly where I've put them all, um, but I know I've got a few half-inch to half-inch connectors. You know, I have so many of these bloody three-way connectors, you'd barely believe it, but... <laughs> One joined to the other connector. Uh -huh. Don't know if we can do that for you, sir. I know I've got a few though because those little um, vinyl lines I used to have for um, the what's his name. Um, sort of like this. This is a three-quarter one I got. But I need half inch ones of those and I've got a couple of those on the vinyl lines I used to use with that crappy little solar pump, you know the little things like a little aquarium pump for transferring the IBCs before it shit itself and I got the uh, that other one that uh, I was showing that time with the uh, spraying the water in the washing machine, the three quarter inch one and more taps I've got a strong feeling it may actually be out in the laundry. And I threw all those out on my shelving out there. Jeez, you've got friggin' trigger nozzles and everything, bloody saddle clamps for two inch lines, 90 mil connectors, even the blooming. What's his name on there? Coleman. Shower heads. That's the beauty, that one. Nut and tail. There's nothing like having plenty of connectors and crap like that. What is that one? That was a bio gas experiment that didn't quite uh, happen. When you can see it, it's the top off one of those four or five gallon cubes. 
and tapped into it, actually threaded into the lid is a tap. My father uh, amazingly had a thread that was uh, the right size for this tap. That's actually the tap itself has actually got a thread on one side and the barb on the other end. Anyway, it was all too dry and it never fermented properly or anything like that. These are the other ones I've got, these step down size ones to run your little uh, shower head um, lines. Step down from half inch to shit, I think it's like a six mil or something. Uh, there's six mil or six mil, I think. Yeah, I don't think I've got to find it in my main stash here anyway. Uh, there's another old trick I should tell you guys about while I'm bumbling through here. Um, sometimes you go and get yourself a bit of copper line, um, half inch line, and you can actually jam a garden hose over the top of it, the same as what I've just done with the um, water tank out there. And you basically get your two NG garden hose, jam a bit of copper line on and whack two hose clamps on and then you'll be fine. And you you know, and that'll be your your fix to join it. Um, the other one is um, wire and I've seen glorified wire used as hose clamps before. Those blasted washing machines I've gotten pretty much any oh I mean hell that cooler, oh, you know, the one that draws air into my bedroom. That's such a cheap piece of shit. Instead of using hose clamps, they have actually used, to connect the vinyl pipes, zip ties. And the other stunt that they are likely to use a neater looking form of uh, in those washing machines I've got, and pretty much anything Chinese or South Korean made, instead of hose clamps, is actually wire. And you loop a bit of wire in, and then you just start twisting. And I've seen farmers do the exact same thing, just to save a couple of dollars. And here, that I believe is off a of Nissan. Look at it, two bits of wire. And all they've got basically is a bolt and a little washer there. The end of that bolt isn't threaded, but the washer will just sit happily on the end there. A bit of wire looped around, like so. And then this piece of sheet metal is actually threaded. And of course your wires go into that through two holes that are drilled. And yeah, you just keep spinning and it just the washer will always stay in place and then it just tightens and, and that's that's it. Two bits of freaking wire, you know. That's Nissan, that's Japanese. I uh, know because I got that off the uh, Nissan that went to scrap metal. Um, anyway, I used to leave them out here, these lines, but um, anyway, I'll keep looking. But instead of boring the shit out of you going through my stash here, I'll show you where I've screwed up. This is it here. So it sort of kinks around, twists around a bit. Well, that was like that when I put it in the ground. I should have bloody known. And there's a little trick you should always do, people, but I usually only put in very short lines, and they usually don't have too many spider egg sacs, cocoons, dead spiders, bits of algae and other stuff in. And that is to actually blow down a line. I mean, more or less put the end of the hose up against your lips and blow and see if you can get, if you can blow. And if you can blow a little bit and then it starts to build up pressure, that means it's blocked. And all it means is your your breath has built up air pressure inside the line. Uh, you've got to be able to blow and continue to blow. And even if it's sort of a little bit restricted, especially if you've got thinner lines that go a longer distance, um, that's sort of all right. But there shouldn't really be any restriction unless you've got 100 metres of garden hose or something like that. Um, and you should be able to keep blowing and keep blowing on, not sort of keep blowing and have the pressure build up and build up. Uh, because essentially that looks all right enough, no big a deal, but the reality is it's so bloody kinked that it's cut it off. Anyway, I'm pretty certain the only last place for these connectors would be inside here, so I've got to go and have a look in there. 
Well, this is one of them. And uh, that's one of those connectors I was saying about. A bit hard to see it, so we'll just go on. Oh, there you go. Looking rather black. Um, yeah, I had another bit of line that I thought had a bit more of this on, and I can't even find this other hunk of line. It's a bigger vinyl line. It's like a thicker wall, but it's all sort of stiff. It's like got a bit old and it's no longer flexible, uh, even though it's only about bloody three years old. <laughs> Um, and I don't know where that's gone, so it's just ridiculous how many lemon tea pieces I've got comparative to um, hmm. no, I'm going to have to go through my stash when I had a big clean up um, I got all of these similar things and put them all in together in most cases and um, yeah, I'd hope to find another one of those, but if I can't find another one of those, I can just replace that line anyway, but it means digging up frickin' eight metres more of shit that I just buried yesterday, and I don't really feel like doing all that all over again. So, um, yeah. I'll tip me box out on the ground and see if I've got a second one of these, but that's one, so that's a start. And uh, maybe I might have to go over and Look at me dad's stash and steal one off him. He won't mind a lot of these things. Don't get used for years at a time. I don't know even how many half-inch connectors he's got, actually, because I don't think he'd use that many. These, by the way, you just push one side one way and one the other, which I can't tend to do with my fingers, but with ooh, with pliers you can do it quite easily. Um, and, yeah... Bloody beauty. I was going through trying to look for more stuff and I found a tap with another one of those little connectors like the hose clamp El Crapo plastic ones I just showed you. I thought beauty. I've got two hose clamps are on the go. I found a whole stack more hose clamps. Uh, those two bigger ones will be fine for sure. Um, and I was rumbling through all this stuff spewing shit all over the damn ground and then I'd already pushed it something out that was sitting on the ground without even looking at it. I remember this now. This was when I was uh, playing around with either the... something to do with the wood hot water system anyway. Um, and <laughs> as usual I always say, well I'll do it like this and I'll have an extra bit of that and I'll need an extra one of them and then I'll realise that I don't need that because one bit hooks into the other and I don't need to use multiple connectors and or I've already got a tap that's got barbs built into the tap initially as opposed to, you know, using something like that and then an individual tap screwed into it, blah, blah, blah. And I remember this mob that gives me, well, gave me all these bits. Now they just let you jam it all in your pocket, but earlier they used to put them in these little bags for you. Sure as eggs, one two brand new unused half inch connectors in there along with another one of those little blooming hose clamp things so so we got it we got it sorted and uh, might have to use one of the steel hose clamps um, and yeah then we're still going to have enough, enough of these plastic ones I'm pretty certain that's the right size that one in there to do a half inch if not I've got enough hose clamps anyway um, I will go ahead and use the little plastic ones underground because they're only going to get the <laughs> going to be ignored and they're going to stay under there for years and nothing's really going to hassle them too much. Um, yeah, so that saves me ripping all that line up and I'll just go and replace that with probably about a foot worth of uh, garden hose and then we'll uh, continue on.